Too many people rely too heavily on things that are not volume. You can see here that I've, I've mixed this. I've got a little bit of changes in volume so that when we play this funk at my brass... We've got everything sitting there nicely. We've got our drum kit there, and then we've got this these horn loops that have come over the top here. We've got our brass ensemble and our French horn. We've got these all at different volume levels. And the reason I wanted to rant on this today is that too many people rely too heavily on things that are not volume. Now, volume is deceptive because it's not just these volume sliders. Volume actually also includes things like EQ. Because EQ is, I've said this a bunch of times, I know, so those that have been around a while will probably be sick of me saying it, but EQ is a volume dial for your different frequencies. So if we came in here to these horns and we go, all right, we got these horns, they sound, we'll mute the solo them. So we like those horns. If they're too loud, we can turn them down in the mix. If they're too quiet, we turn them up. And balancing your volume, getting your static mix right is super important and an important first step. The other thing that is volume related is your EQ. So if you come in here, we'll just use the visual EQ because it's simple to look at. And we go, we don't want the bass in these because we've got bass in other instruments. So we want to roll off the bass on these and it's a little bit too treble heavy. So we just want to just gently notch down that treble a little bit. Then when we play, it gives us a more present sort of sound. Now, I probably wouldn't roll off that much because the visual EQ is a bit weird to use. So that is all that is. And if we turn this up and down, listen to the bass sound as I turn it up and down here. Big full bass. Much thinner. And that is part of your volume. So when you're thinking in terms of my static mix, think about both your volume sliders here but also your EQ, because that is the static mix of your frequencies. And the mix engineers used to be called balance engineers because they were balancing. So when you're thinking about this, you're thinking about balancing the volume, which is getting everything right. And then when you're looking into your EQ, you're thinking about balancing the frequencies because you don't want a whole bunch of frequencies in the bass and then nothing in the treble. That, that sounds weird. That sounds too overblown and muddy. You also don't want a whole bunch of stuff in the treble end and nothing in the bass. It'll sound thin, it'll sound wimpy. So you want to have that balance there so that when you hit play, you've got the nice sort of woodwind here up in the high end treble. You've got the, the drums and the kick drum and the bass drum kicking in and it's sitting nicely in the mix. Now the other thing that is also volume is compression. So if you're finding that you've, you know, you've got something but your performance, and it's a bit different in these because these are all virtual instruments, but let's just say that we wanted to pop, make these drums pop out a little bit more, but when we turn them up, they get a bit overpowering, which is very common. So we hit here. Like, that's a good drum beat, but when we bring it in... It could be a little bit hard to get those drums to sit in the mix without sort of overblowing things. So what we can do is use compression, because again, compression is a volume effect. All of these things are volume, and getting your volume mix right is important. So if we come to the compressor here, we can turn on our compressor, and then where you have your threshold and then your ratio is basically telling it how much to actually push down on the top. Because remember, compression is turning it down. What it's doing is it's cutting off the peaks and then pulling everything up. So it's pushing down the loudest parts, pulling everything else up. And when you listen to these drums, you'll hear how this actually works. If we play them here, let's give it a big ratio here so it's gonna make a big difference. And let's drive this compression down. And back up again. And what it's actually doing is it's just, it's making it hit a bit harder. It's flattening the tops of those drums so that we can have them turned up but with that there, and we can, we can mix it in 100% just so we get all the compression in here. If we play this now with our compression applied, we're getting that really tight drum sound that when we bring it back in, hear how that cuts through without overpowering? That's the beauty of compression. So. When you are mixing, uh, there's a bit of a practical rant this week, but when you're mixing, look at those three things before you really start playing around with other plugins. Because the, the temptation here is to go, oh, I'm going to put a flange on that, I'm going to put a reverb on there and 17 delays here and throw black hole on everything. Before you go and do all that, 
get your static mix right. And your static mix involves those three things. And one bonus thing, because your mix, unless you're mixing in mono, is also going to be stereo. So do consider also where your sounds sit in the stereo spectrum. So if we come down here, we'll notice that all these sounds at the moment are pretty much down the middle, except look at this. I've got this ensemble over here to the left. I've got this French horn over here to the right, so that's balanced that out. This one's in the middle, that's in the middle. This one's way over to the left, this clarinet, and this flute's way over to the right. So the reason I'm doing that is that when we get to this section, we're going to have a nice wide but balanced stereo field. Take a listen. So that way you're not, you know, not everything right up the middle. You're getting balance. So when you're talking about balance of volume, it's balance of volume across your whole mix using your volume, your EQ, EQ and your compression. And then it's the balance of your panning by panning your tracks left and right. And this is not just for GarageBand on iOS, it's GarageBand Mac, and it's really any other platform that you're using. Whenever you're mixing music, static mix and volume is underrated. And when you first start out, it's the one thing that you should be focusing a lot of your time on. So hopefully that helped you out if you are newer to mixing or even if you've been mixing for a while and you just needed a wee refresh.